The question isn't whether or not we're living in a series of intersecting constructs. We are living within a construct as long as there's a narrative story that accompanies what we experience as reality. So if we remove the question of is there a construct and instead we bring ourselves into awareness of what is the construct that we find ourselves in or what we sometimes think of as the water we swim in. Have you seen the illustration of the two fishes where one fish is jumping out of the water and the other fish is following them and the one fish is saying to the other fish, look quick, that's the stuff I've been telling you about. It's the water. And if we don't know we're in the water, then we don't know the nature of water. Neither do we know how to respect water. So the not knowing where we are and the pressures created upon that construct by forces outside of our own family creates it so that we're largely unaware of the construct, which is sort of how the construct is designed so that you don't know that you're in it. Think of stories like The Matrix, where there's a blue pill or a red pill, but it really isn't about which pill you take. It's ultimately about your choice, your personal choice, your will to begin to see the construct, to begin to identify the way that the construct has shaped your own personal worldview and what you've decided are truths with a capital T that are often juxtaposed against others who claim truths with a capital T, which may be the root of all dissension is the assertion of one belief or system or paradigmatic framework over another. So I ask you today to consider very, very mindfully with the eyes of the heart, not just the brain, with the eyes of the heart, to not just ask the usual questions about government, systems, administration, socializa socialization, culturization, all the isations, all those systems that we uh, are aware of and point to in our political and spiritual ideologies. But instead, let's go a little bit deeper than that in this moment with an invitation to look at the construct that you have woven for yourself. Now, the one that you've woven for yourself is a complex, collaged, collaborative fabric that is beautiful. It is mighty. You've made it with your own hands. You have sheltered yourself with the fabric of the story that your psyche decided to work with, usually in wonderful life situations and in traumatic life situations. The fabric is bordered with both trauma and beauty. But inside of that border of trauma and beauty, there's a whole way that you show up as you to others. That's a, that's a whole thing. But that you show up as you for you. And that's really what we're about here. That's really what I'm about here is I think I'm pretty much devoted to being a spellbreaker. But what I've noticed is that until the individual begins to identify their own construct, in other words, the spells they've placed upon themselves, allowed others to place on them, and then the unintended ones that just survival and the basic hierarchy of needs uh, imposes upon us, until we've gotten a look at that fabric, then the capacity for us to identify other constructs can be really challenging. We simply can't see it because we're looking through the lens of our own constructs. By construct, I mean an invented paradigmatic narrative that constitutes a kind of worldview that is a collection of a series of beliefs about what you believe is so, about all of it about all of it, like where are we even? In the story of the matrix, there are these two realities. There's the one that everybody's in for the most part, except those who have gotten out. 
And in that one, they don't know that they're there. And then there's the one where the people have gotten out and they're trying to help others get out and then take a look at what that other place is and see if others want to get out. But there's always this underlying story, isn't there, of the question of whether or not someone really wants to get out. And I believe that that story of whether or not we want to get out is the premise for the idea of whether or not we can actually get in. And what I mean by in is in to you, where you are an active co-creator with the construct, which is your own identity. You get to choose how that works out. But unless you know that you do, and unless you know that there's not just a preset of who you are, but that actually you could shape that by choice, then it can be challenging because you don't even know it exists. But now you know it exists because either I've just told you or someone else has, or you discovered it for yourself in your art, or hopefully some combination of a series of interconnected wake-ups has led you to a moment where you're like, hey, wait, there's more to me here than I thought, and how am I going to get to it? Well, creativity is one of the wonderful, just phenomenal gifts of human beingness, which allows you to get at that interior construct and to reveal it externally through an art form, whether that's music or whether that's dance or whether whatever, whatever, however you end up expressing yourself, it ends up being expressed in an external way from this internal shaped reality. And when you get a look at it, then you can say, oh, wow, that was inside of me. What else is there? So art and being creatives allows us to identify the often hidden constructs, to get a look at them, and then by choice to reshape with our hands, with our minds, with our hearts, what's possible. So dear ones, today the invitation is and always is, can we be a conscious caring, compassionate community who can be together identifying invisible constructs and begin to create constructions that are not only imaginative and mythological, but that actually feel good to us to be inside of. Each one of you is a gifted soul, and we are an absolute circle of other gifted souls who's inviting you into a more full awareness of your identity of your story and of your part in the great unfolding.